Mandalorian Chapter 12 continues the story of Mando wanting to give the child or take the child to the Jedi, specifically with the reveal of the last episode from Bo-Katan that she knows the whereabouts of Ahsoka Tano, which seems to be the goal for Mando. But before then, he stops off on a planet and re reunites with some old friends. This is the first time in Season 2 that we've seen the return of Grief Karga and Cara Dune to the series. Grief Karga, of course, being Carl Weathers' character, who seems to be a lot older than he even looked even in the last season, and Cara Dune, which is Gina Carano's character. Now look, I know that Gina Carano has been under a lot of controversy lately because of some comments she made or something. I haven't really kept up with the story, to be honest with you. I've kind of tried to stay away from actor gossip drama. It's just not something I really care too much about, honestly. I see it pop up on my feed once in a while from channels talking about it, and I don't know what Gina Carano said. It doesn't really bother me, whatever it was. Even if she said, because I'm Cuban, even if she said I hate Cubans, I don't really care because... I'm still going to watch The Mandalorian. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still going to be entertained by this show. No matter what some actor says in the real world, there's too much investment here for me. Plus, there's too many good people that worked on this show. Production assistants, other actors. They don't deserve to suffer some silly boycott because of what some actor said. Now, again, I have no idea what she said, if it was even that bad. I didn't pay attention to it. I don't really care. But I, just, I know some folks are probably going to be asking me about that or commenting about it. I personally just... I just want to enjoy The Mandalorian. That That's all I'm here for. I want to be entertained for 30, 40 minutes, an hour, however long the episode is. This one's 40 minutes, specifically. And as you could expect, they need Mando's help. Because that seems to be the theme here, is that Mando shows up for something. Hey, we could use your help. And then he's like, fine, I'll help you with whatever problem you have. You know, again, it does feel like a video game. Um, it's episodic in nature, but it's also serialized in that we now have a throughput of a storyline, not just Mando taking the child to the Jedi eventually, but of course the other plots that are going on as well. But that seems to be the main one. However, the episodes do come off very episodic, but not... This could be very annoying with some other TV shows, because you don't want to be one of those shows that you skip episodes and whatnot. Here, I think they give you enough storyline threading and enough storyline tissue to where you can kind of enjoy the episodic nature of the episodes. You know what I mean? I've seen other shows that that really execute this much poorer than Mando. Um, here, it seems to be working for me so far. Episode 2 of this season was not the best, but 3 was fun, and this one's also fun. This would turn into another heist mission where Mando and Cara Dune and... Um, Grief are breaking into this Imperial facility to try to free the planet that I guess has been causing them tr trouble for a while. And it, it's another one of those, you know, breaking and entering type of stories. You know, the show is a heist slash western, so expect that. But the good thing is that each episode, although there are they are similar, still have enough differences to keep me to keep me entertained. I mean, that's just my opinion. You know, I, I, I'm still entertained by this show. I'm sure some folks are like, another heist, but it's like, that's that's what this is, you know? Now, one thing that's the most interesting thing about this episode, and I believe this is going to tie into the sequel trilogy, specifically Rise of Skywalker, is the fact that it turns out, and this is my interpretation of it, so I could be wrong, and if I am, leave a comment, but it looks like at this Imperial facility, they've been working on some kind of cloning. Now... I am not sure if this cloning is for um, them to create that clone body of Palpatine, which I assume has already been created because this is after Return of the Jedi. So the clone body that Palpatine has in Episode Nine, albeit all rotted out, has already been created. Um, but also, um, I don't know if it's really that. It could also be to create a clone of Snoke. But you have to also remember that the Sith Eternals, or create the clone that would become Snoke, um, the Sith Eternals also had multiple cloning projects going on at once, trying to find a new vessel for Palpatine. So, um, but anyways, the bottom line is that they basically, we find out that the reason why the Imperials want the child, why they want Baby Yoda, is because Baby Yoda, being strong with the Force, they want to transfer his blood into one of these clones. That's my interpretation of it. So I'm guessing what they're trying to do with the, with the cloning experiment is just to create 
force sensitive clones whether they be like i mentioned earlier a palpatine body a snoke body or maybe even sith trooper bodies i mean who really knows but it appears to be that and this is also the episode where because of the imperial uh, recording they find where mando and the rest find out that moff gideon is not dead so moff gideon's role in establishing whether it be the empire's continued um i guess existence or the for even the first order is going to be a one that's going to be a story going forward in this series. But I could not tell what the clone bodies in the little chamber were for. I, it just it doesn't give you a clear indicator of what it is. I, I actually paused it and everything. I couldn't tell what it was supposed to be. Action wise, the episode then goes to this really awesome action sequence where man stormtroopers are just getting blasted left and right. I mean, just boom, 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 boom. You know, they have this cool fight with Mando and the freaking rocket pack going up, taking out stormtroopers, just annihilating them. Um, you know, the other characters are there fighting their own. Then um, Kara, like, hijacks the ship and, you know, escapes. And there's, speeder, there's a speeder bike chase afterwards. So it's just, it's like a big, you know, high action, high velocity action sequence. And it's really, really fun. Then after the speeders get taken care of, then we have TIE fighters coming after them. So... Some of these shots are, I mean, really, really, the shots are close to blowing each other up. But uh, this is probably the most special effects heavy as far as, like, action sequences go in the entire Mandalorian season so far for season two. I mean, this was just like a scene out of a movie. And it was one thing after another after another. Just so much action in this episode. And then when Mando comes in with the big save, um, blasting the TIE Fighters, that was great. I mean, action-wise... You can't complain about this episode. Yo, I really, really enjoyed it. We do find out also that Cara Dune is from Alderaan. So, you know, she suffered the... Uh, she was a victim of the destruction of Alderaan in the original Star Wars movie in A New Hope. So, um, I guess that's a little bit more backstory about that character. You know, we previously did not know she was from Alderaan. So, she definitely has a vendetta against the forces of evil and the Empire. But she still does not want to join up with the resistance at this time, or the rebel, or actually, it would be the Republic at this point. She would not want to join up with them. She wants to do her own thing. Now, the big twist at the end, if you can even call it that, is we see Moff Gideon there, and he's in a room. First of all, we find out that Mando's ship's being tracked, so that's not a good thing. But uh, he's in a room, and he sees a bunch of dark. There's a bunch of dark troopers on the wall. So this is the Dark Trooper Project, which we've seen. Originally, it was in the EU and Dark Forces, the PS2 or PS1 game. Really fun little Doom game, Doom style game, uh, first person shooter, uh, way back. And Dark Troopers are freaking awesome. And um, they're genetically modified stormtroopers. They're kind of like clones, but not really. So it could be that they're using the child's blood for that, but I don't really think so. I think the child's blood is probably going to be used for. Uh, the Palpatine slash Snoke clone. That, that's my guess. It just makes the most sense. But having them there is going to be interesting to see if we actually see this project go off the ground. And if in future seasons they're going to be... We're going to go back to this. So this is a great teaser of things to come. Also, is it just me or does the, the chick who talked to Moff Gideon at the end of the episode... She looks very familiar. Is that the same one... From Battlefront 2? Uh, maybe it's just my own eyes deceiving me. I didn't play too much of, ba of Battlefront 2. But it looks... It looks very similar to her. I don't know. Anyways, this was directed by Carl Weathers. He did an amazing job. This is an amazing episode of Mandalorian. Um, probably my second favorite of the season, except for the first one. And it just keeps getting better and better. I mean, the show does not let up. You know, it's just quality stuff. If the lead villain of this series winds up being Moff Gideon and maybe as Boba Fett also being involved in there, if he's going to be a villain, we don't know yet. Um, or if it's going to be a teaser for his own show. You know, I wonder, you know, I think that's going to work. I think Moff Gideon being in charge and being the lead villain could work here in this season. But overall, really enjoyed it. Lots of reveals, lots of interesting setups in the future. And uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. So... Again, uh, they are pulling elements from all three trilogies here. You can still watch this and not necessarily watch the sequel trilogy, but there do seem to be some seeds being planted for stuff in the future, although uh, it's still not definitive yet. You know, It's still very early in the timeline before we get to that kind of stuff. So still, 
it's uh, we'll see where things go. With that being said, I'm going to bring this review to a close. What did you think? Let me know in the comments of Mandalorian Chapter 12, The Siege, and we'll talk soon.